this is Rachel from The Healthy Womb and this is the second in the video about inflammation and periods and in this video I'm going to talk about leaky gut and autoimmune disease and how it affects our periods and our hormones. One thing that so many women are having now is issues with leaky gut and it's unfortunately not readily recognised by the standard medical environment and professionals because they just don't cover nutrition in their training. However, they do recognise it under other names. So what is leaky gut? Okay, so most of you know we have a gut. It goes from our mouth right through to our anus and it's a continuous tube essentially. That tube includes things like our esophagus, our stomach, our small intestine and our large intestine. In the large intestine, this lining is one cell thick. Just to give you an idea of comparison, our skin, on our hands, our face, is seven layers of cells thick. This is one layer of cells thick, so it's really thin. The reason for this is because this is where we absorb water and various nutrients from our food and it has to get through this barrier. However, the cells in this barrier are very, very tightly packed together so that only the nutrients from the food are absorbed. However, there are a list of inflammatory foods and in certain people, some of these foods can cause these cell junctions to weaken so you start getting gaps between them. When you get these gaps it means that larger molecules can get through so it's not just the nutrients from the food but the food itself and this is a problem because this sends our immune system into overdrive to kill off those food particles it's finding in the blood because it doesn't recognise them. Once this has happened over a large period of time and most of us have been eating things that can cause this in our bodies for most of our lives, so it usually is for a long period of time. Our immune system has become hypersensitive to these food molecules and then it starts attacking other healthy tissues in the body that it thinks are these molecules. So really common examples are, for example, the thyroid. And 90% of hypothyroid cases are Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is autoimmune, which is linked with this leaky gut problem. Other people may have other problems such as nervous system disorders. So, for example, um, MS and other autoimmune diseases. Other people may have problems such as rheumatoid arthritis. Now, I'm not saying that every single person with rheumatoid arthritis, with MS or hypothyroid is due to this leaky gut. I'm just saying it's one of the main causes. And by changing our diet, we can see if there's any improvement. So one of the common things that most people do is an elimination diet, which is where you cut out all the foods that are likely to cause this from a minimum of 21 days, ideally 30 days minimum, um, even better if you can do three months, just to give your body a complete rest, and then you add in the food one at a time, and then come back off it again and see if there's any change in your symptoms. I've done this myself and it actually brought out some interesting results, and I do this regularly just to help reset my body and reset my hormones. So common foods that can cause this, and I have to refer to my list because I can't remember them all the time. Corn, gluten, sugar, especially refined sugar, flour, especially refined flour, dairy, soy, and then the less lesser common ones, but they're still pretty common, eggs, candle tinned foods, nightshades and citrus fruits. And then some people have further ones again. Usually they... By the time you reach 20, you're sort of aware. Um, so, for example, one of mine used to be bananas, which isn't a common one, um, but I noticed whenever I had anything with banana in it, it was an issue. So what you can do, first of all, cut out these foods, which is quite difficult normally. However, if you stick to eating unprocessed foods that you cook yourself, then this makes it a lot easier. You can also get um, abdominal massage. There are so many different types of abdominal massage out there. I trained in fertility massage therapy, but there are loads of others out there, and this can help 
um, get some movement and increase the blood flow and remove the congestion in the large intestine and that can really help with the healing. Castor oil packs can be really really helpful too. There's, if you go to the free stuff tab on my website which is the healthy room and go to free stuff you will see um, where you can get the castor oil pack information and further information about that. And finally if you're thinking, well, this is actually quite difficult, I don't know how to do that and cut all this out of my diet, I am running a seasonal cleanse. This will have a recipe book and a complete guide walking you through step by step um, how to do this. So step one is all the preparation, what tools you need, what emotional preparation, trying out some recipes, upping your cooking techniques. That's stage one. The next stage we add in breakfast and morning routines and we continue adding in a layer after a layer so that you're not just going, oh, okay, I've got a new cleanse and I've got to go in head first. We go in gently, we give your body the chance to adapt to this and we give you the time to be able to adapt. And then after that, you can use that as the basis of an elimination diet, which I also tell you how to do in the cleanse as well. So this is a group program, you do it online at your own pace and there's a Facebook group to support you. If you're interested, the link to enrol is below. Alright, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear them in the Facebook group and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Take care.